Falcon 9 is in startup. There's the call, Falcon 9 in startup. Cygnus now transitioning to internal power. The Falcon 9 computers are in final pre-launch checks that instructs the rocket through the last seconds before liftoff. Falcon Cygnus, Both stages 20, now being launch. pressurized for launch. The range remains go for launch. A pristine day for a launch from the Space Coast. T-minus 40 seconds and counting. Thirty seconds. Fifteen seconds. T minus ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. One, ignition, invisible power, and lift off. Go, Cygnus, go, Falcon. Falcon 9 and Cygnus begin their flight, taking aim on the International Space Station. Pitch and roll program are in. Falcon 9, parking out to the northeast. Come with me here and pressure something. Plus 40 seconds, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40. Telemetry nominal. This is our 10th mission of the year and second to the International Space Station. And we've throttled down our engines in preparation for Max Q, which is coming up here in a few seconds. This is the largest structural vehicle load. Supersonic. This is the largest structural load that the vehicle will see on ascent. Max-Q. And great news, we've passed through Max-Q and are throttling those engines back up. Next up will be five events in rapid succession. That will be main engine cutoff, stage separation, second engine start or SES-1, the boost back burn startup on the first stage, and fairing separation. Main engine cutoff, or what we call MECO, is where all nine M1D engines on the Falcon 9 first stage will shut down. It's all those engines that you see there on your screen. And this will be followed by stage separation, or the separation of the first and second stages. A few seconds later, the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage will ignite to boost Cygnus to low Earth orbit, which is also known as SES-1. Then Falcon 9's first stage will ignite again to orient itself to head back to land with the boost back burn. Shortly thereafter, the fairing halves will separate and expose the spacecraft to the vacuum of space. Again, those five events coming up in a few seconds. Miko stage separation, SES-1, the boost back burn starting up, as well as fairing separation. Miko, stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. Stage one boost back startup. And there we've had Miko stage separation. The MVAC engine on the second stage ignited, as well as the boost back burn starting up on the first stage vehicle. And some awesome views there on your screen on your left hand side is a view of from the first stage, on your right hand side, a view from the second stage. Fairing separation confirmed. And excellent news. We were able to see and hear the call out for confirmation of fairing separation. You can actually see one of the fairing halves falling back to Earth on your right hand screen. Stage one boost back shutdown. And we heard that call out, and you can see on your left-hand screen that the engines on the first stage vehicle have shut down, and that concludes the boost back burn for the first stage vehicle. You can also see that the grid fins are now deploying on the first stage. Both vehicles are following nominal trajectory. And great call outs that both vehicles are on nominal trajectories. Some 
awesome views on your screen. Again, on your left-hand side is a view from the first stage. On your right-hand side is a view from the second stage looking at our MVAC engine. You're watching a live webcast for NG20, Northrop Grumman's 20th resupply mission to the orbiting laboratory. This is SpaceX's 10th mission for 2024 and the second flight to the International Space Station just this year. You might be interested to know in order to get to space, the rocket has to do more than just go up. It also has to go sideways and really, really fast. At liftoff, gravity is pulling straight down on the vehicle. As we ascend, we tilt the engines, and the technical term for that is called gimbling, and that turns the rocket horizontally. Now, we are still going up, but we are now also heading horizontally away from the launch pad, and that's what we call a gravity turn. An object typically needs to go 7.5 kilometers per second or 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth and get into orbit. And that is exactly what this vehicle just performed. And on your left-hand side, again, is the first stage making its way back down to Earth. Today, we do have a land landing, so we do require three burns in order for it to make its way back to its landing zone. We've already completed the boost back burn for the vehicle as it oriented itself heading back towards land. Next up will be the entry burn, and that's where three of the Merlin engines will reignite. This helps to slow the vehicle down as it re-enters the upper parts of the Earth's atmosphere. And then we'll be followed by the last burn, which is the landing burn. And that's a single engine burn that begins, that brings the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to touch down back on Earth. And a really cool view of that first stage vehicle from our ground tracking camera. That looks amazing. <laughs> And that entry burn is coming up here in just about 30 seconds or so. Views look amazing today. Again, you can see on your left-hand screen the view of Earth in the background of the first stage as it's coming back down to Earth to land on our landing zone. Right-hand screen, again, is of the second stage looking aft at our MBAC engine. Stage one, entry burn startup. We just heard that call out and you can see on your left hand screen that the engines on the first stage vehicle have reignited. It's just about a 17 second burn. Stage one, entry burn shut down. And stage awesome. one, FTS has saved. Awesome tracking view of our first stage vehicle as you can see that the entry burn has concluded. And the first stage vehicle continues to make its way back down to Earth. The vehicle's continuing on a nominal trajectory. And this is an incredible view that we are getting of the first stage vehicle heading back to land. Right now it's using its four grid fins to guide... Stage one transonic. ...to guide the vehicle during its descent. And this is... Amazing. You can see those four grid fins deployed. What a view that Stage we have. Landing burn. <laughs> and you can see that the landing burn has begun for the vehicle. Let's watch as Falcon 9 touches back down on land. Stage 2 FDS has saved. Stage 1 landing leg deploy. What a sight to see. Falcon has touched down. This booster just completed its 10th flight and the 268th successful landing of an orbital class rocket, including both Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy boosters. That was such, an, such an incredible view to watch. Now, next up is Seco for the second stage. That's where we will shut down this MBAC engine. Nominal orbit insertion. And great news. We heard that call out for Seco 1 as well as confirmation of good orbit.
at T plus nine minutes and 15 seconds into the mission. The second stage has one last major task, commanding separation of the Cygnus spacecraft just a few minutes from now. For those of you just tuning in, you're watching a live webcast for NG-20, Northrop Grumman's 20th resupply mission to the International Space Station. This is SpaceX's 10th mission for 2024 and second flight to the International Space Station this year. And for those of you following along, you'll know that Cygnus will be joining two SpaceX Dragon spacecraft that are already docked at station as part of the Crew-7 and Axiom-3 missions. Crew-7 docked with the space station in August of last year and Axiom-3 arrived earlier this month on January 20th. We are getting some incredible views. Again, what you're seeing on your screen is a view from the second stage looking aft at our MVAC engine. And you can see today that we are flying a shorter nozzle. And there you can see that shorter nozzle there on your screen. Both Northrop Grumman and SpaceX have a long history of supporting the International Space Station with cargo missions like today's. SpaceX's first commercial resupply services or CRS mission, CRS-1, launched in 2012 and made history by restoring America's capability to deliver and return cargo to the station. The Cygnus spacecraft has been visiting the International Space Station since 2013, and the first Cygnus CRS mission, Orb-1, launched in 2014. Cygnus has delivered more than 138,000 pounds of equipment, science experiments, and supplies to sustain the International Space Station's astronauts under NASA's Commercial Resupply Services contract. The most recent cargo resupply mission was SpaceX's CRS-29, and that was at the end of 2023, delivering more than 6,500 pounds of scientific research crew supplies, and hardware to the orbiting laboratory. And today, Dragon is the only spacecraft currently flying that is capable of returning significant amounts of cargo back down to Earth. The CRS partnership has helped build a strong American commercial space industry that will soon take us to destinations beyond low Earth orbit. Now, in fact, these missions provide critical learnings that will help us develop a human presence on the moon and Mars, which will require a steady supply of cargo missions to grow and thrive. Again, if you're just now tuning in, we've had an on-time liftoff from Cape Canaveral at 12.07 p.m. Eastern time. We had the we had a good stage separation. Falcon 9's first stage returned back to land and touched down for landing. Now, right now, what you're seeing on your screen is a view from the second stage vehicle looking after our MVAC engine, but the Cygnus spacecraft is still attached. And we are just waiting for Cygnus separation from the second stage in just about a couple minutes from now. Again, getting some awesome views here. And you can see that the vehicle is coasting on your bottom right hand corner of your screen. You can see the speed as well as the altitude of the vehicle with the payload attached. As a reminder, this is the first SpaceX launch of Cygnus this year. Cygnus refers to the constellation that is visible in the northern night sky. It's the company's tradition to name each Cygnus spacecraft in honor of an individual who has made substantial contributions to human spaceflight. Northrop Grumman named the NG-20 Cygnus spacecraft in remembrance and celebration of the life of NASA astronaut, Dr. Patricia Patty Hilliard Robertson. Following separation, Cygnus will have a nearly 40 hour transit to the space station where the station's Canada Arm 2 will grapple Cygnus and the spacecraft will attach to the Unity module's earth facing port for cargo unloading by the Expedition 70 crew. If you're just now joining us, you are watching the NG-20 mission carrying the Cygnus spacecraft. 
currently attached to our Falcon 9 second stage, awaiting separation in just about under 30 seconds from now. That view that you see there on your screen is looking forward at the payload. And separation coming up here in a few Next seconds. deploy confirmed. And an incredible view. You can see the Cygnus spacecraft drifting away from Falcon 9's second stage, confirming successful spacecraft separation. The Cygnus spacecraft is now on its way to the International Space Station, expected to arrive in just under 40 hours at 3.20 a.m. Central Time. And that's going to wrap it up for me here in Hawthorne. Be sure to check out SpaceX.com launches for a schedule of our upcoming missions.